I think that so I'm pretty tall, so I'm used to being like if I fall I die. <laughs> in real life. Uh, no, uh, I'm not sure. That's a that's a really big question. Uh, Richard and I, when we went to when we all went to Dubai um, in May, we went to the Burj Al Khalifa, uh, which is the tallest building in the world. And we went and had a little tour. And he and I both were like, oh, this is creepy. It feels like you're flying a plane. Um, Dean, I don't know, man. I, I didn't. Let me ask you this. What, what is it about flying that you're frightened of? I love, I love fear of heights. And um, I get air sick really easily. OK. So I don't know how to like. Well, because for some people, it's, it's not being in control. For some people, it's turbulence. For some people, it's fear of heights. Um, you know, I, I, my wife is a very, very poor flyer. Um, any, any mild turbulence that she wants me to go and knock on the cabin door and ask the pilot what's going on. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know that turbulence is an issue for you, but if it is, I'll tell you uh, what a pilot friend uh, of ours told, told me and, and explained to, uh, to my wife. That actually helped her. She, uh, he said to her, he said that when you're flying through the air, you hit turbulence. Um, air it moves like water. So those are little ribbles in the air that the plane is hitting. But if when you're in a boat, and you go across somebody else's wake or some you know some sort of a, a little bump in the water and stuff, there's no fear of the boat all of a sudden just capsizing and sinking to the ground. It's a boat. It's meant to float. That's essentially what an airplane going through turbulence is. It's just ripples in the air. It's meant to fly. It's meant for that stuff. It's not scary. It's not the plane going down. It's not, none of that. So uh, she found that helpful, just knowing that kind of little bit of information. Now, if it's unfortunately you see seen all over the person in front of you, you can't help you with that. <laughs> unfortunately, the second question, he is really scared of boats. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was sinking in the water. Apples, apples is right. Yeah, uh, uh, air is fluid in a strange way. So, like you mentioned, if you hit a wave in the water on a boat, uh, you are maybe upset for a second. For a second, uh, you'll be safe. Man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send my, my. The odds of you of something happening to you in a plane uh, are far less than something that happened to you in a car. More people die at supernatural conventions. <laughs> on the on the left side, so <laughs> shit. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, anyway, good luck out there. Good luck out there, Dean. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah, you bet. Hey, Cheers. Hello. Um. Questions for either of you, but probably Jensen has a better chance of knowing the answer. What the fuck is that supposed to be? It's sort of in power. In the episode when the guy auctioning body parts to monsters, Donna's niece rolled up into the cold open in a late model Chevy Impala. So when Dean examined the car for evidence, I was kind of expecting some kind of smart ass remark. Then I looked closer and realized they removed the logo. Why in the world did they basically cast another Impala on the show and then anonymize it? I know the answer. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. Um... That fan was supposed to be Jerry interviewed. Jerry Rudy. Uh, <laughs> if, if my memory serves me correctly, I believe it didn't have it. I believe the, the car had, it came there without its without its uh, um, emblem. So that's it. Finding one and slapping it on was a little more difficult than anticipated. So it just went without. But it wasn't it wasn't done because we had clearance from Chevrolet, uh, obviously. So yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like, oh well we can't use that. We don't want to get uh, we don't want to get sued for, for you know copyrights or whatever. Um, I believe the car actually didn't have it. So thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to run the first episode. <laughs> hey, how are you? Hi, uh, my question is for Jensen, but mainly about Jared. So, <laughs> I'll 
my favorite kind of question. I don't have to do any work, but I get to hear about it. Before 2008, Chen Chen, you said that you are a performer, not a singer. We all know what happened after that, right? You didn't really keep your word. <laughs> but Jared, you said in 2000, uh, Team in Choice 2000? Award. Team Choice Award. You said that you love to sing, but only in bathrooms. <laughs> so my question is, for the last 10 years, Jensen, have you ever tried to make Jared sing with you? And if you did, when did you? Feel is hopeless and stopped. <laughs> um, some might say that he's the songbird of our generation. <laughs> some um, voice of an angel, really. A deaf angel. <laughs> Huge angel. Is I have I have heard Jared. Uh, uh, on occasion, sing along with uh, with a song that happens to be on, or or um, or whatever. Uh, but I, I have I have never seen him just belt it out by himself. And sing now. Yes, sing now. Sam 
would be something similar to, yeah, well, I didn't really. I feel like Mark Payne was pretty evil. I don't think I've ever had the chance to play like, an evil version of Sam. I've been sold as, I've been Lucifer, I guess he's evil. Uh, but he's kind of a calm evil. Uh, oh, you know what? There was, a, there was an episode, there was an episode, one uh, episode, um, where Sam ends up picking up Joe along the tall, and like slamming her on the, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was it called? Yep. Born under a bad Born under a bad time. Yeah, I feel like Mark Kane would be like that, but just on on steroids to some degree. Like a, even more, you know, like when Apples did Mark Kane, he did a fantastic job. Um, and, you know, he even stabbed me in the leg. It was cool, but it was like, it's good, it makes sense. Uh, but uh, he, he told me, it, it's, it's one of these, one of the funny things about Supernatural, the last 300 and, what are we at now? 315 episodes? Uh, I stopped counting after 25. <laughs> is, is Supernatural, the show, has kind of tried to turn the line between fantastical and supernatural and uh, real, reality. Um, and so I don't think we ever would have gotten to the point where uh, Sam and or Dean were too kind of crazy and lascivious and evil. So I feel like Mark King Sam would be just a little bit meaner than uh, Born Under a Bad Sign. Sam. What about Soulless Dean? Soulless Dean. Um... <laughs> Then my hot. hot. <laughs> so he goes, <laughs> Soulless D uh, would probably be uh, doing a lot less pull ups and a lot less push ups. <laughs> uh, um, might be, might be, uh, there might be a lot of similar flavors to uh, Demon D. Also hot. Yeah. 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 Like Temperature-wise, it was really hot though. So it was shooting in the year of summertime, and it was uh, a lot of sweat. Thank you, Ruby. Okay, Well done. How are you doing? How are you, brother? I'm here. Great. My question to both of you is, what was your reaction when you came out of United with Jeffrey Dean Morgan last season? Was it something that was spontaneous, or was it something that was being planned for a long time? Uh, my recollection, I'll start this off. Uh, my recollection is that we had been, you know, we had kept in touch uh, for years, and had been fighting for it, and he had, he had been expressing that he wanted to come back and see the family. Um, but he had been on a, he had done some smaller shows with like Grey Anatomy or something. Like Grey Anatomies. Um, and then uh, the, the, the strolling deceased or something. They, were, they didn't last very long. He, he had been really busy, uh, you know, becoming a movie star. And strolling and just cease. <laughs> you can borrow it. I feel like it's like The Walking Dead, except their hands are in their pockets. Are <laughs> <laughs> you whistling? So that's, that's the spin-off. <laughs> Stay tuned for the strolling deceased. <laughs> uh, he just strolled around right my house and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> he was deceased. I just, uh, uh, we, uh, we, uh, 
haven't been in Wayne Wade since then for a long time. Like there are a bunch of uh, there are a bunch of characters in the show that we wanted back. He was probably definitely top of the list uh, for what it meant for both Jensen, Jared, and, and Sam. Um, and then they finally found a way to make it make sense. Um, and then I smashed a pearl and hit him the balls with it. <laughs> I think I saw it. Oh, hi, she's seven. Uh, clean it up, clean it up, by the way. Um, it was awesome. It was awesome to, to revisit and to work together. It was, um, it, yeah, and it, it was, it was a little tricky uh, because the the show um, had had gone ahead and written the idea with the um, knowledge, knowing that he had a lot of interest in wanting to come back, um, and a lot of that had been expressed through Jared and I. Uh, who's still keeping in good contact with Jeff. Um, you know, I, I remember saying, like, this is, this should happen. Like, this is obviously something that everybody wants to happen. But a lot of it really depended on his schedule. Um, you know, as you know, the band's uh, pretty busy. Um, and... Yeah. Um, just a little bit of It's a little bit of Um... And uh, so they, I guess they reached out to, to his people, um, and they just flat out were like, nope, not interested. <laughs> and I don't think they understood that Jeff was interested. Uh, you know, a lot of times the, the agents and the managers and the lawyers and stuff, they, they are a barrier uh, for, for good reason. Uh, it, it didn't work for good at this particular time. And so um, when the show kind of got shut down. Um, the Bob Singer actually, yeah, he, he gave he gave me a ring and said, "Hey, you know Jeff? Uh, does he not want to do this now, or, or what's the what's the deal?" And I'm like, not, "No, uh, every conversation I've ever had with him, he's expressed uh, you know total interest in, in coming back." He's like, "Well, it's, you know, we just got the door slammed in our face." I'm like, what? So I called Jeff and I was like, hey, are you still? She's like, it's like, absolutely. I'm like, well, not according to your folks. And, um, and he was like, oh, that's ridiculous. So I'll, I'll call him right now. So he called him, gave him the heads up. The show called back and they're like, okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to need A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And the show was like, whoa, we, that's, that, we can't do that. That's, you know, that's not our budget. We don't have. We don't have walking dead money. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so, again, the door got slammed. They were like, well, I can't do that. So, so Bob calls me back up and was like, what's going on here? Like, hey, now he says yes, but he wants all this stuff. I'm like, I called Jeff again. I'm like, hey, you know, he's like, I didn't ask for any of that. <laughs> I'm like, you got to get your representation line because they're asking for the moon and the stars. He's like, no. He's like, I can do it for nothing. And so, and all of a sudden, I'm like, am I the agent here? <laughs> and you're my 10%. <laughs> so I called Bob back, and I'm like, no, they're full of it. They'll listen to them. Jeff wants to do it. He's cool. And, I mean, it came down to, like, days before he was supposed to show up because it was a schedule thing. So we, we earmarked him for a certain week, and then that week was coming up, and then all of a sudden, his people were like, he's not available. And we're like, what? So again, I got on the horn with Jeff, and I'm like, hey dude, what's the deal? The same matter, he's like, ow, oh, I'm totally available. Look, I'm just going to come in and do the show. <laughs> and sure enough, dude shows up on the day, ready to go. Ready to play <laughs> so, uh, yeah, th thankfully there were, there were forces outside the control of the, uh, the entertainment managers, lawyers, and agents that, uh, that were at work with that situation, and it, and, it, and it all came to happen. So we were all thankful for that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mark. Hi, Anson. Hi, Gorgeous. Hi, and hi. Say hi to the boys as well. Hi, Okay, so I know you guys are emotionally attached to your characters after all this time. What do you do if you come across a script where you just feel like, okay, they want to really do that? 
say that? Or is that just not an option? You don't deal with the writers, you just suck it up and read lines. You mean read lines on here or don't write something? Don't. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, great question, and that's happened for several years. And I think one of the, one of the reasons Supernatural has lasted so long is A, they all forgive us and accept us and love us and keep watching. Yeah, when we when we fall through um, and bolster us up um, back to where we were. Uh, but B, we have sort of a, a rule on set and uh, best idea wins. So if somebody's walking down the street and they're like, Matt, you should say this, they are like, damn, they were right. You know, and, and so we're trying to serve the all of us are trying to serve the story, so there have been times where we, and I think Atlas told the story one time, famously, where we were reading a scene, and I was reading Sam's lines. I was like, you're like rehearsing in this trailer, and he was reading Dean's lines. And then one of us was like, hey, why don't you read Sam's lines, I'll read Dean's lines, and let's You see did, you said it, you were like, hey, go with me on a journey here. <laughs> Team. Whoever it was, we were probably both thinking it. So I think he then ran, uh, read Sam's lines as Dean, and then he read all of Dean's lines as, as Sam. Yeah, that right. And all of a sudden, it just was like, that's we we're like we that gotta, now makes sense. We got to talk to Bob Singer, who's director. So like Bob, we have an idea. And he's like, great, can't wait. I bet it's good. And so we brought him into Angle's trailer, and I read. Dean's lines as Sam, and Apple's read Sam's line, or yeah, Sam's lines as Dean. And Bob was like, Yeah, you're right. All right. I'm like, he let me. Yeah, he's like, That's it. All right, we should go with it. But yes, I, I, I'd say that there is, uh, it is, yeah, it, it's, it happens quite frequently. Not that we're reading stuff more like, Oh, my character would never say that. I'm just going to change it. It is, Look, the writers do an amazing job. They write incredible stories, and they write fantastic dialogue. It's, you know, we're, we're lucky to, to have the crew and the team that we do. Um, but it is a, there's a very great relationship that we have with the writers, and, and that is uh, based on trust. We trust that they want the best for our characters and, and the show, and they trust that we will perform it to the best that we can. And if there's a line in there, or if there's a, uh, uh, an action in there, that is written on the page that maybe the writer was thinking fit that moment, but then when we get it on its feet and we say it out loud or we perform the action physically and it just doesn't make sense for the character, it doesn't make sense for the particular scene or story, um, they have entrusted us to make those adjustments needed. Uh, and I think that that's probably a rare thing on, in, the, in the entertainment industry. I mean, I you know, a lot of times that people would have to yeah. phone to the writer's office, you know, you have to call people. And sometimes we're shooting at like midnight on a Friday and everybody's, everybody in LA is asleep. And we're like, well, this, you know, these lines are just not making sense now that we're saying it out loud. And so... And I'm, I'm not, uh, uh, Jensen and I are not the type of people to, to tune on horns, but I only have six months more with this character until this, the show is over. And I will say, like, we've protected our characters for 14 years. And a third of years. We haven't protected Jensen, we haven't protected Jared, we picked Sam and Dean Winchester. And so I think we earned it. Like I'll say that. I fucking <laughs> I memorize 
So I read the scripts over and over and over and over and over. Um, I have read through script 10, but I've read the outline for 11, 12, a dozen times at least. And then, um, so the way I, I try to approach the day, the filming day, is to pretend it's a movie I've seen a dozen times. Like we all have those movies or TV shows or songs where you know the next verse. The next scene, the next line, the next word. So I try to get to that spot um, where I know what is going on in the scene. You know, there's a scene about Sam going to the store. And the scene's about Sam going to the store. So Sam says to me, hey, I'm going to the store. What do you get? Apples and oranges. Uh, why oranges? Well, I'm trying to serve you back. Well, what's your new day? Well, I, I, I like vitamin C. Well, why vitamin C? You know, so, and then, but the words don't really matter. It's more about who you are as a as a person, as a character, and blending them. For so for me, I try and just make it like it's it's in the back of my like a dream. I've seen that now. Um, so I memorize my lines on the treadmill. Uh, that morning, I, I commit to whatever scenes we're doing that day, and then he and I will get to set in like hair and makeup or one of our trailers or blocking kind of get through it and, and kind of do the logistics of it. Um, but yeah, and then you just kind of like bother me, you know? I'll read the script. The script reads me. <laughs> Is it Chuck Norris? <laughs> oh, the jokes are flying on set. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, very, I, I'm, I'm actually the opposite of that. I, I will read the script one time, uh, but I will read it very, very slowly. Uh, a lot of times I'll go back and I'll read one line three or four or five, six, seven times until I figure out the way that uh, I think it makes sense to me. Then I'll move on and so it'll take me, you know, 40, 45 page script is usually what we have. Uh, I'll spend an hour and a half reading it. Um, and that's just because I'm, I'm, I'm not reading, I'm studying it. But I'll only do it once. And then, so I have the idea that just gets locked in there. And then when I show up on set, then, like he said, we'll read the lines a few times. Uh, and, and then we'll go in and perform them. And for me, uh, it leaves, it kind of, it, it leaves me available to allow for happy accidents and all of the little things to, to kind of uh, present themselves in the scene. Because a lot of times if I'm reading it and I'm studying it um, over and over and over and I've seen this happen with you know, guest stars that will come on, they'll read the lines in the mirror so much that they've locked in exactly how they want to say this word, exactly how they want to say this line. And no matter what the person is doing opposite them, or how they're delivering their lines, that would that would change the way that they would deliver their lines, they're still saying it exactly the way. So they're not really even listening to me. They're just waiting for me to stop talking so that they can deliver their performance. But that wouldn't make sense because what happens if I'm delivering a different performance than they had in their head? It's what they were reacting to. So it, in my mind, it, it you know. Over he, he does it in one of us, and he does this, but if, if, you, if you overdo it and you lock yourself into that, it can be, uh, it can be damaging, I think. It just doesn't yeah, leave yourself we, available for the creativity that happens. The flexibility. There's a, yeah. We've had several times, several times in the last 14 years where we will do a scene with a, a new guest star, and it'll be our coverage. So Dean is saying this, Sam is saying that, and the guest star is saying their lines. And then we'll turn around, and they are worse. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I work a And we'll look at each other like, shit, I wish they were just like going with the flow. Because there's some bit of like, they're saying the dialogue, but they're, you know, you can learn how to hit a forehand in tennis, but if you have to dive for it, you can't hit the same forehand. So it's more about flexibility and learning to bottom lead and learning to like dance a little bit. Like you can learn the moves, but then, hey, this person doesn't move the same way you thought they would. Um, so I think he and I kind of 
really thrive when we let people bring out the best in us as actors while remaining true to something new. Don't expect a bunch of fastballs. Be ready for a curve. So my big thing is you guys, everybody looks at you guys with such perfection and we tend to forget that you're just human like all of us. Uh, not true. Um, <laughs> okay, fair enough. You guys are <laughs> um, I follow your, um, your guys' wives on Instagram and if they were here right now, what would they say their biggest pet peeves with you were and why? <laughs> Jason would love to answer this first. Oh, I've got my own pet peeves. Do you know, me started. Do you know yours? Do you know your biggest? Yeah, I was talking about it. I'll tell you one. I've said it before. And every time Jerry comes into my trailer. No, not. No, what would D say about you? Not what would you say about me? Oh, I thought we were talking. Oh, okay. We were talking about what would your what would D say about you? Her about you. What would Daniel say about me? Her yeah, leave me alone. Okay. <laughs> uh. Gosh, where do I start? <laughs> I mean, I feel there's 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 the the usual things. Pick up out of yourself. The you know, the the, the dishwasher is right there. Why would you need them to sink? <laughs> because it's easy. <laughs> Actually, I say because I know you'll put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> And then, and I go, you're angry. And she's like, uh-huh. And so I go, I grab a towel, I wrap it around her shoulders, and I go, now you're super angry. And then she stabs you in your sleep. It doesn't always work. Uh, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I don't know, I can, I can name, I'll name one uh, that I know uh, drives her nuts. Uh, when I... It's driving me nuts. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> when, uh... A, a pirate, a guy walks into a bar, and there's a pirate <laughs> sitting at the bar, and there's a, a, a steering a, a steering wheel for a boat, what do you call it? A boat steering, a, a what? A helm? Yeah, y'all don't know either, fine. There's a, there's a boat steering wheel next to it, and uh, the bar comes says, wheel. A, a steering wheel? Shift wheel. wheel. Shift wheel. It's hanging on his belt. The shift wheel is hanging on his belt, and the guy's like, What's up with the shift wheel? And the pirate says, I don't know, but it's driving me nuts. <laughs> that was my joke. That was going to be my joke. Yeah, but you really got my own job. Um, I, live, I leave the, like, if I, if I leave, if I go outside the 
of butter chicken in Zion or something, or the dogs go to eat. I don't close the door. Uh, I live like a bachelor most of the time. When I work out, I don't want to do like a whole load of laundry just for one set of clothes. So I'll jump into the shower in my clothes. And, uh, <laughs> but I'll like just about so get moldy and I'll hang them over the bath. Um, apparently, I thrash around a lot when I'm asleep. Do you want to cut my throat? <laughs> Where do you think these scars come from? Yeah, I know a lot of, I, I'm pretty, yeah. I'm, I'm not a, but, I can play San Francisco, so. Oh, thank you for your question. You don't care about that. So, so thanks. Hi. Hi, Hi um, I asked Jared this question earlier today, and he said he would be interested see what you might say, Jensen, uh, but you can both respond too, because uh, it's more of a reflection than a question, as when you started this journey all those years ago, I'm sure you could never have envisioned what it's become in terms of, you know, the wild popularity. I know. I know. Uh, was there like a moment, or was it a growing awareness that, wow, this is really getting bigger and I would say that it was something that happened little by little over time. Um, it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't like we got a phone call and said, hey, guess what, you guys are a success. Um, I think it was, uh, we were for years and years, from season one to two, from two to three, three to four, even four to five and five to six, we were, we were always not sure if we were coming back for the next season. Um, now that doesn't mean that we hadn't done something that we were proud of, that doesn't mean that we didn't think that we had succeeded in what we had set out to do, because anybody that gets from uh, a se one season to another season, that's a huge success. The odds are so stacked in your favor, or against you, uh, to, to fail. Um, I don't know what it is today, but I know that when we got on air, in season one in 2005, there was like an 86% failure rate for, for new shows. It's probably more than that now. So just the fact that we got on the air was uh, was great. And the fact that we stayed on the air was even asking even more on it. So yeah. I think it was little by little throughout the years when we kept coming back and we kept coming back and they moved us around in the schedule, in the lineup, in the week. As they, well, and they and they put us in slots that were not favorable at all. And it was, you know, some of these slots that we went to were where they put shows to die. And we didn't die. You guys kept us alive. Yeah, early on, uh, I think that's right. It was sort of like a season maybe six is the first time I knew that, or not knew, we never know, like, I think season four, five or six was the first The season. confidence changed. Yeah, and we, I mean, we had, uh, or we have uh, um, a lot of really, uh, like, you know, degrading pictures of our bosses, so we knew they couldn't find us. <laughs> Uh, Twitter wasn't big then, so uh, no, it was uh, yeah, it took a while. It was it was almost like a like episode by episode thing where um, we we never knew we were. We thought we we thought we season. jumped the shark like twelve times, and we did. you know we were like, oh, this is certainly we did an episode yeah, we did an episode called Jump the Shark. We thought we were uh, that we were not. Like, we were like, well, we might as well just throw it all against the wall because. This is uh, this is a sinking ship, and and it and it didn't sink, and it, it kept floating, and we kept moving, and we kept we kept making the show that we wanted to make, and you all started paying attention, and some of you uh, did from the get go, some of you found out about us as we were going along, some of you just found out about us a year ago. You know? 
And, and where have you been? Yeah, where have you been? <laughs> um, yeah, they were yeah, six. you were born. Got it. <laughs> She's probably not on it. How's this? We were on Supernatural when the first iPhone came out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he didn't get one. <laughs> so he was such a Blackberry, like... You know what I'm saying? I had a race called Palm Trio, Palm Centro, and the Razor. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. They're all like seven years old. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Anyway, it, it was it, it took us a long time before we were confident that we had another season uh, coming, and a lot of that had to do with uh, a, a an incredible boss and a very dear friend, Mark Pedowitz. Um When he took over the network, uh, he he began giving us a lot of love and and a lot of support, and became a champion for for us. And having that, I think, uh, really propelled us to where we are today. Um, so thank him, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alicia. This is my first con. It's so nice to meet you guys. Uh, first of all, Jared, congrats on Walker, Texas Ranger. So proud of you. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Well done. And just really, really, really quickly, really quickly, just so y'all know, just to clear it up, uh, it's not picked up or anything yet, but whether or not it gets picked up for the next six months of change, I am Sam fucking Rancho's <laughs> I won't give Sam Winchester and Supernatural and this dude every ounce of my commitment that I have for the last four and a half years. Thank you. And Jensen, congratulations on winning not soccer the other day. Uh, so my question is... They said football. <laughs> Well, then you're going to be playing football. Some people said soccer, some other people said football. I'm like, great, hybrid sports, I'm into that. So my question is, uh, I've been re-watching the series preparing for season 15, and there, have, there are a lot of parallels between Sam and Dean, and Michael, and Lucifer, and Cain and Abel, and they do a lot of parallels, amazingly. What is your favorite parallel so far? I think, uh, I think the, the Kane bit was a lot of fun. Um, we talked about it earlier, actually, the Mark Kane bit for me was a good time. But do you mean, like, what was the best at act? Or what was the best at, what, what do you mean? Uh, what's the best connection, like, parallel? There was one episode where there was a parallel between two boys who were brothers, and then uh, yeah, the, they just do a good job of tying the show. I, I think the, the, for me, like, the battles between Kane, Mark Kane, Dean, and, and Normal Sam were fun. Um, God, it's, it's rough. I, I have a soft spot, obviously, for Demon Blood Sam from season four. Um, he was hot. I feel like the battle between uh, Michael and Sam and Cass was uh, something that, uh, what's that? No. No, not Michael and Lucifer. <laughs> you mean the puppet fight? Hanging like 
some idiot puppets. Uh, <laughs> we were like holding on to, to like each other's arms, and he just looked at me and goes, it's come to this. <laughs> and I looked back at him and I was like, I feel like I should apologize to you. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, here is this incredibly talented actor in front of me, and, and fighter, and just somebody who shows up every time he's, he's on set and gives 150% of, of what he needs to do to, to make that day incredible. I mean, he's just, we, we have the utmost respect for Mark Pellegrino, and he's just hanging there like a helpless rag doll. And I'm, I'm at least, I'm at least glad that he had someone to hang there with. <laughs> I would have felt bad if he was up there by himself. Um, but I, I, as far as battles go, I, uh, I, there's a lot that have stood out to me that, have, that I've been, um, that I've been happy with. Um, I will say that there's one coming up in, uh, it's not a big, you know, it's not King and Abel, or it's not, it's not these, like some sort of a big uh, character thing, but it is a battle that I think you're going to enjoy. It's, uh, it's, uh, we're filming it next week, this week. Thank you so much, Thank you, welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, if there could be a supernatural movie after the show ends, what would you want to see the plot line about, like, be about? We didn't even say what the plot would be about. It's a movie. Thank you. Um, I mean, I'm going to try to be very uh, strategic because uh, I, well, Jensen and I know how the show wraps up. Oh. Yeah, now you're not worried. Um, I, if, 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 and when there is a supernatural movie or reboot on Netflix or something. I mean, I got some screams, so your turn, so I, I got some shows. Um, you didn't even know I had an idea. I know. <laughs> Where's my rib shot? Uh, I, uh, I, if, if, if Supernatural gets the opportunity to come back um, either on CW or Netflix or, or however, whatever we air on, uh, or could air on, um, I hope it's about Sam and Dean trying to make the world a better place. I hope we do more time travel. I do too. There you go. That's all I got. To win. To win. Um, I was thinking like, maybe like the 90s. That would be fun. <laughs>
Oh, we all good bison and jump in the fray. Perfect. Well, listen, don't hurt each other. I'm so excited because coming up on the stage is someone you barely see. That's right. An hour with me, which I can't. Including my family, I'm sure to that. But hey, you're stuck with me, so ha!